Today I decided to ride the J Church Line in San Francisco's Muni Metro and review it, as well as cover its unique history as San Francisco's oldest electric streetcar and my complicated thoughts on it. While BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit System, is more well known, since it covers much more of the Bay Area and has some surprisingly diehard fans, the Muni Metro just kind of does its own thing within the limits of the city of San Francisco. What makes it odd is that it somehow combines elements of a streetcar, light rail, and a metro, and manages to do it with mixed results. This is probably most exemplified by the J-Line, the oldest operating line. The San Francisco Municipal Railway, or Muni for short, was the first publicly owned and operated transit agency in America, founded on December 28, 1912. It was founded after the city chose not to renew a cable car operator's franchise and convert it to electric streetcars, where instead of a mechanical cable under the car, there are electric pantographs powering from above, as seen here. Shortly after, the city spent the next 16 years aggressively building electric streetcar lines, with the J, K, L, M, and N lines eventually making up the bulk of the modern San Francisco Muni Metro system. The J Church Line opened during this period in 1917. It remains the oldest existing streetcar in San Francisco. Back then, it ran solely as a surface-level streetcar through housing developments built as the line was being developed. Most of the existing route reflects that, such as how it goes through a park and through a right-of-way in between different housing lots. It is also San Francisco's best attempt at a green-lined railway. Just look at that grass! Look, Mom, I'm touching tram grass! Its name comes from the Church of Jane, which was a new wave religious movement that would smoke jays at Dolores Park. I'm just messing with you, I'm sorry. <laughs> the J is from the chronological order it was created in, as in, it was built before the K line. Church comes from one of the streets it went along, Church Street. Just looking at it, it looks like the J is a functional European style tram that must be a delight to ride. And it can be a delight. But as a wise man once said, They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. It is emblematic of what is wrong with the Muni Metro by trying to do too many things at once and not fully succeeding at any. Let's hop on. The J Church Line runs every 15 to 20 minutes starting at Balboa Park, a transit stop where BART, two other Muni Metro lines, and a few bus routes meet. From here the J goes up north along San Jose Avenue. Already it's committed its first sin, a blight, a minor one. It runs with regular traffic, with no single priority, or any attempts to give it the same treatment many bus lines and Muni Metro lines have in the city. Also, because it uses an over 100 year old streetcar route, only one car trains are possible, meaning it has only a small capacity advantage of the articulated trolley buses that are the backbone of San Francisco's transit network. This is unfortunate because a decent chunk of the J's route is a high injury corridor, so fitting more people onto trains would have a direct safety benefit. Being more forgiving, the J-Line makes an improvement by actually having its own right-of-way. This part was built in the 1990s, not 1917, and was only politically feasible because there just aren't any houses on this section of the line. Going further up the median of San Jose Boulevard, it is able to speed up a bit, and now it looks a lot more like a light rail line. It then has to stop at a stoplight and make a turn. This is when things go... a bit off the rails. You see... The J Church has a reputation for not being reliable, and the first day I went and filmed it, I didn't run into any issues. I was able to film a decent section of the route. On my second day, however, <laughs> this happened. Uh, it appears the pantographs weren't able to get enough power to move the car in either direction, so the entire line basically collapsed. I ended up having to use footage from another day for the next section. Moving along, it then turns right, ending up on its namesake Church Street and through Noe Valley a neighborhood known for being a good place to raise kids if you can afford it. Emphasis on afford it. We'll pass this hilarious streetcar shaped parklet used by Umakasa as we go north. It then passes through its coolest section, the private right of way where it goes off church and in between people's backyards until Dolores Park, an iconic San Francisco park and home to, among many other events, the Hunky Jesus Easter competition. Truly, what would Hunky Jesus do? The private right-of-way is often used as a reason why the J wasn't converted into a trolley bus, like the A through I lines. See Fog City's video on this, link below. But my understanding is, residents just preferred keeping the status quo, a history that continues to this day. Part of that legacy is, largely for safety reasons, it runs pretty slow. There are definitely some additional safety infrastructure that could be built to allow it to speed safely a little bit. It then continues on church a few more blocks until it hits Market Street. 
what is essentially the main street of San Francisco. At this point, you might be asking, okay, so maybe it could use better transit lanes and more frequency, maybe speed up a tiny bit, but why do you seem to dislike it? Seems like a reasonable use of a legacy streetcar route. And so far in the route, I'd agree. So far, nothing is stopping Muni from running more trains and making it reliable. But wait, why, why didn't you just turn on market like the old streetcars did? What do you mean go underground? In, in, in this tiny one-car train? We have now arrived at the most problematic part of the J Church line, its journey as a subway line, the metro in Muni Metro, if you will. In the early 1980s, San Francisco finally transitioned from a PCC streetcar-based streetcar system to a more modern light rail system using Boeing LRVs, a train worthy of its own video. This overall led to the situation of largely historic surface lines built for historic streetcars, all leading into one tunnel under Market Street. The J through N lines all eventually go underneath Market, the main street of the city, with varying levels of grace. The J managed to do more of a belly flop. You see, taking a one car long streetcar and then having it LARP as a subway leads to a lot of problems in the Muni Metro system. The first is that going underground like this causes frequent delays. These delays get compounded on because on top of sharing the Debose channel with the N line to get underground, it shares the Market Street subway with the K, L, M, and N lines. This combination of mixed traffic and then underground metro is a deadly combination of four delays because once one thing falls out of line, it can lead to cascading problems. This can lead to pretty long delays on the J, which I've personally experienced several times. Uh, data has shown quite consistently the J Church line has the lowest ridership among Muni Metro lines, but also had below average performance, averaging a 40.6% on-time performance, and well below Muni's goal of 85%. This all means that for the five eastern stops underground, which cover the commercial heart of the city, you have this tiny little train you have to walk down to catch. While this is true for other lines to some degree, all the other lines can handle two car trains and there are plans to upgrade some to three cars, so possibly double or triple capacity versus the J. This lowers capacity on the Muni Metro under Market Street overall, with the minor side effect of people being forced to huddle at one corner of the station. Muni has been able to have up to 42 trains an hour in each direction in this tunnel, which is impressive given that it's a tunnel built on a series of branch lines going back over 100 years. But doing that with each line juggling with mixed traffic outside the tunnel is a recipe for disaster. Muni has said that they would like to get it down to 30 an hour in each direction in order to get better on-time performance. There are two solutions. Have the J-Line terminate at market and not go underground and have riders transfer, which they tested during COVID and Muni claimed they got amazing performance results, but residual pushback killed that option. Or have the J-Line just turn right and go up market where after four blocks, it is a car-free street. There are likely some engineering hurdles such as new platforms with this option to make it wheelchair accessible, but I think it's possible. Oddly enough, the Muni Board of Directors proposed a third solution, replace the current modern trains with old PCCs and have them turn on market with some supplemental bus services. Reject modernity, embrace tradition at this extreme of a level is rarely a transit solution, but going back to the type of train these lines were designed for makes sense to me. So what much of this line was originally built for anyways, and you can already take a heritage car down parts of the line. Additionally, when combined with some trolley buses along church, which would only require minor changes to allow for, the city could easily increase frequency of the J considerably. Despite that, Personally, I prefer option two, just since it's the simplest one. These issues and lack of frequency, currently 15 to 20 minute intervals, are reflected in the ridership data. Going off the most recent data I requested from the SFMTA, March 2023, the J-Line has less than half the ridership of any other line on the Muni Metro, as well as less ridership than most other bus lines, on top of the lowest percent of COVID recovery among Muni Metro lines. By my count, 23 bus lines had better March weekday ridership than the J line, and the only Muni lines with worse ridership are some obscure bus lines that operate every 20 minutes. To put that into perspective, the bus line with the closest amount of weekday ridership to the J was the 19 Polk, a bus line which I've never heard about till now. Side tangent, why does the 19 Polk spend like half its route going parallel to the Van S bus rapid lanes? 
Like, you could clearly turn right from Gary onto Van Ness, and then on the way back, turn left from Van Ness onto O'Farrell. I realize this is a hyper-local thing to point out, but we didn't rebuild Van Ness for just one bus line. I digress. It should be noted that the J-Line exists in its current form due to political inertia. During COVID-19, it was temporarily suspended, like all their Muni lines, then restored, but stopped on market, then, due to public response, brought back to its current state, but only every 15 to 20 minutes. This means that many, many bus lines that operate standard 30-foot buses with the same frequency outperform it, such as the 19. Additionally, because of the previously mentioned market tunnel issue, there just isn't a way to increase frequency when it has to compete with other lines with much more ridership for tunnel space. It should be also noted that one line, the L, is currently suspended till the end of 2024 due to construction. So the issues are only going to get worse once it's restored. This ultimately means the J line in the long run needs adjusting. I think based on ridership data and future Muni Metro needs, the main medium term goal of the J Church line should be to make it service only, but turning along Market Street with improvements on accessibility. This could lead to higher frequency of trains along the line, as well as allow for supplemental services. Although to be honest, I don't think any of this will happen. Like a lot of transit decisions, a large reason for it being the way it is, is due to political will. Sure, you can argue that yes, we could potentially provide more frequent services along the J-Lines route, going service only, and provide better services to the K through N lines. But ultimately, this line's current state and its existence after most other streetcars were torn out is due to community groups who have argued that it would severely harm riders with mobility issues along the J-Line, and nobody wants to be accused of being against people with mobility issues. I very strongly sympathize with riders facing these issues. I've lived with many people over the years with some degree of mobility issues and understand what they're going through a little bit. I would contend though that the city has a lot of riders who fall into that same category, but don't have a one seat surface to subway experience at the cost of the rest of the system. And I don't think exploring various alternatives that mostly preserve that right should just be cast away. I'd also be remiss not to point out that one of the main neighborhoods the Jay goes along, Noe Valley, sort of embodies the type of civic engagement San Francisco is known for. Someone actually made a website to defend a single chase stop, like mad props to that level of civic engagement. There are other community groups who are pretty active for the one-stop J-Line surface of subway, and also against attempts to modernize it with more transit bulbs out of fear of reduced parking harming local businesses. Some of their other transit-related work has been great to their credit, but also, just going off their online literature, there seems to be a belief that the SFMTA is a malicious force that only does counterintuitive projects that will have the opposite effect, that they fabricate data in order to justify changes, and that their ultimate goal is to turn the J Church line into a bullet train at the expense of retail shops, their words. I would also be doing a disservice if I didn't point out that the area along the J-Line is one of the more heavily aligned NIMBY lines of the six Muni Metro lines, which isn't surprising given everything else so far. Ultimately, the J-Line is one of the more unique Muni lines. While it goes through some lovely areas and is the most streetcar slash grass tram of the modern Muni Metro lines, heritage lines notwithstanding, it ultimately is a 100-year streetcar line masquerading as a light rail metro. I think long term, its service will change as ridership on the Muni Metro hopefully recovers, but I also imagine that this conversation won't happen until the benefits to the overall system grow to proportions that the SFMTA feels fully justified, such as when the L line is fully restored. Regardless, take a ride, it goes through a great part of the city that I think is largely removed from popular culture's concept of San Francisco. Maybe grab a beer or your mate at Wood Cerveceria and do some train spotting at Dolores or just sit back and enjoy a route first laid down 106 years ago. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you like this video, subscribe because I plan to do more Muni Line reviews, as well as videos on other transit-related projects throughout San Francisco, California, and the world. Instead of doing a whole top-down city thing like my San Jose video, I want to do a much more specific topic. Hopefully it works out. Let me know your thoughts. See you next time.